there's a cautiousness that we all start off with. We're afraid that it's going to sound bad. And once you lose that fear, then it becomes, like I said, playtime. Yeah. And it's something I encourage people to do a lot. You know, when you open up uh, an aux sense, say you're, you're, you're hooking up a reverb and you, you engage your aux, I default my auxes to zero, not to all the way off. Because I want, when I hit play, that first sound to be a blast of whatever it is. Because it's going to challenge me to say right away, is that cool? Is it not cool? Right. Because otherwise, towards it. I'm going to start and I'm going to creep it up. And I'm going to go, oh, I can hear it. That must be okay. Mm. As opposed to like, there it is. Oh. And nine times, not nine times out of 10, but a good percentage of the time, you'll end up leaving more of that effect than you would otherwise. And if you are of a conservative nature, it's a great way to get out of that because records are bold. The Beatles records are bold. Most of our favorite records are bold. Spike Stent's mixes are bold. Um, you know, what's that uh, Harry Styles tune, Adore You? It's a great mix. It's really cool. And it's it's got depth. It's got width. width. It's got all of these things that make mixes, at least to me, exciting. And it's not overblown. It's not, he's not using, it doesn't sound like he's using stereo wideners or any of these tricks to kind of make, you know, because I hear stereo widening and I hear phasing and it sounds terrible to me. And there are a couple of mixers out there who use it on every mix. And I sit there and I get 30 seconds in and it's not, you know, Spotify is bad enough to try to listen to music on because it's so phasey, mm -hmm. but then you get, you listen off title or you listen off something that has a really good Kodak. And, and even then, man, it's just like, oh, I can't listen to this. And that sucks. And talking about records that, you know, longevity and all these other things, I mean, I can't imagine I'm the only one that has a visceral reaction. I think I'm a little more sensitive to phase than most people, but, but, you know, so there's that camp. And then there's, like I said, the, the spike stent, that particular record, I think it's great. I think arrangement wise and, you know, the subs that come out of it in a spot and then the, the width, the depth, everything I love in a mix and I want to hit play again. And at the end of the day, that's really all we need to strive for. And you were saying there before, if um, someone's trying to achieve, like you said, a wider mix, you would um, discourage them from going to something like, I don't know, the Waves S1 stereo widener, which is just a knob with a graphic on it that goes, Bleh! because all that's going to be doing is some kind of, you know, behind the scenes processing of, you know, offsetting two mono signals and just like phasing one slightly out. Yeah, so it hollows out the center and it, you can do this stuff mixing. Chad Blake gets more width and more low end than anybody on the planet. And at least the time I spent with him, which was a lot of those seminal records that he's really famous for, no stereo wideners. I mean, it's mixing. And, and people don't want to put the time in. It's like they're trying to be fast. They're trying to just get it done. And, uh, uh, so I think that I think that you, what, what people really need to do is just slow down a little bit and just evaluate as you go. Yeah. Um, Bob Ludwig had a quote um, about the best records are the ones where people made the best compromises based on the situation. And I, I was took that as a really cool way to look at it. It's a series of choices you make. And as you make these choices, that's what forms your record and forms how it gets from point A to point B. Yeah. Because if Andrew mixed the same piece I mix for you, it's going to be different. There's going to be elements that are the same, but he's going to hear things that he's going to gravitate toward that maybe I wouldn't and vice versa, you know, and that's what's cool. That that's what would that's the personality aspect of it. There's, Sorry, um, I'm starting to ramble here. No, no, it's good. Oh, yeah. it's good. This is what we need to hear because you know stuff and I don't. That's why I do this uh, series. <laughs> so 